Hey guys, Thomas the Sully Jr. here, aka Mustache Tom, here to review Biohazard Vendetta. So, of course, this follows the previous two animated movies released by Capcom that follow the Resident Evil story, uh, or Biohazard, of course, as it's known in Japan, or in the animated movies. Uh, that being Biohazard Damnation and Bi uh, Biohazard... Uh, I believe it was Damnation and something else that began with a D. I apologize if I don't remember it, but, um, anyways, in Biohazard Vendetta, we follow our three heroes, or, yeah, th essentially three heroes, uh, Rebecca Chambers, Leon, and, uh, Chris Redfield, as we begin our journey following each of them, seeing what they're up to, Chris Redfield was on this mission that went terribly wrong, and they discovered that there were more zombies that were popping up. Uh, Leon was trying his best to get back into a state of rest and relaxa relaxation after uh, doing stuff, and Rebecca has upgraded to being a scientist and finding cures for potential outbreaks such as this. So while that is going on, we get a little look at our villain of the movie, Glenn Arias, who is essentially, from my perspective, is like a Wesker 2.0. If for those of you who know who Wesker is, uh, you'll understand why, once you see this movie, why I would refer to him as Wesker 2.0. Uh, he does fight Chris a bit at the beginning, and Chris is overwhelmed, and uh, the fighting sequence between the two of them is absolutely stunning. I will say this right now at the beginning of this review, the fighting sequences, just like the previous, I believe the previous movie had one or two fighting sequences, but the one here, the ones here are absolutely fantastic. They were, I would say they're jaw-dropping. I actually, I was like, whoa, by the end of the movie, like, Jesus Christ, the action in this movie. Uh, it's a lot more intense, a lot more interesting and entertaining than the live action movies have ever been and ever will be if they do continue that path. Uh, I've always stated that the animated movies are far superior and sure, they're not the best of the best, but, you know, they're, again, they're way better than the live-action movies, so take that for what it's worth. And definitely check out Biohazard Vendetta at that point value alone if you want to continue to see more animated movies, I would say. Uh, show them that, you know, the animated movies are the better of the two. So hopefully we can get more animated movies like this, because I want to follow this story, because it's far more interesting, far more engaging. The action is just so much more interesting to watch. And yeah, so anyways, moving right along, uh, there is a point in time in the movie where they have to explain a lot of stuff, uh, and thankfully it's all contained in one scene between... Uh, Glenn, uh, or Wesker 2.0, and Rebecca, as well as, uh, and then it cuts away to Leon and Chris, who are also discussing a very similar thing about what this new virus is capable of, what the vaccine is used for, and so on and so forth. It goes on for a bit, but it's not, it, I don't think it completely overwhelms the movie, so it just, it just you know, it's, it takes up that chunk, and then that's it. Uh, but from there, uh, essentially, Chris and Leon eventually have to team up together, and Leon, you know, he was still done with everything. He wanted to be on vacation in his little house place up and wherever it was, uh, but his place ends up being attacked uh, because the evil guys are following them. Uh, they have a Bane-like fellow in the movie that's just, like, following them and then attacks them with, like, a minigun. Uh, and once you see him again, when you'll think, oh, wow, that looks like Bane a little bit. Um, so, anyways, we, we see that 
Leon's finally up for the mission. Uh, they grabbed the evil guys grabbed Rebecca in the meanwhile, and she had gotten effect infected, by the way, when we first saw her. But she was able to have enough time to find a cure and inject herself, and she was grabbed, and then she was infected with the new virus, so she was turning again. And that was essentially her role in the movie. Her role was unfortunate, but, you know, because you, you constantly think, oh man, she's going to die, isn't she? That's what I kept thinking, but then... You know, the end of the movie kind of changes that. Um, and Leon and Chris have separate badass moments. Uh, I think they were actually about equal in opportunities to be badasses. And actually both also had opportunities to get that near-death experience. So everyone, the three main characters that we follow, all, you know, have that moment of, holy crap, I think they're going to die or something. But uh, they make their way into the, the city it's of New York, so New York is being infected. Uh, you know, Chris has his little team, one of the team members dies pretty early on, uh, and then the other two are in this, like, chopper, big, big, like a, a massive plane, I guess I'll call it. Um, and they stay safe for the majority of the movie. Um, so Leon gets his motorcycle and he's like driving through. And he's like trying to, they're trying to blow up these like tanker things that are like releasing this gas that's making people turn. Uh, and then Chris ends up finding the facility where uh, Rebecca is being held and then Leon meets him there. So they fight off together fighting off the zombies, and as I said, the action in this movie, as they're just shooting zombies, nonetheless, is absolutely just, it's intense, it's cool, it's really fun to watch. Uh, the moves they perform, they seem almost unnecessary. Some of them made me laugh, like, I think, like, Chris, like, suplexed one of the zombies, or he did, like, something. He did, like, a DDT, like, a wrestling move on one of the zombies. It was absolutely over the top and kind of funny. Uh, I laughed. I actually legitimately laughed at that. Uh, so the two end up splitting up again after their little action sequence team up. Um, so we get to see them shoot out some more. I believe Chris makes it to, um... Glenn first, and then they they start fighting on the like the rooftop of the building that they're in. Uh, and as I mentioned before, once again we got another action sequence between these two. First, it's a shootout, and then they start. Chris starts like running towards um, Glenn, who still has ammo left, by the way. So now they're shooting at each other like this far away from each other. You saw my mouse right there, but whatever, I don't care. Um, they're like this far away from each other, and they're just like sh running around, sh trying to shoot each other. Uh, it it's absolutely ridiculous. They're doing like, almost, I want to say like, they're virtually doing CQC versus each other. Like, me and my brother were watching this, and my brother's like, man, we really need like Big Boss from like Metal Gear Solid right now to fight this guy, because this is absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> or something like that. Um... So anyways, they end up like fighting on the glass, like on this glass surface for a bit. And then um, Glenn eventually gets like kicked into the glass and then he falls all the way down to the bottom floor. And yes, he was still alive after he fell. So I was like, Jesus Christ, this guy's not human. Um, so he tells the Bane creature to like unleash his power or whatever. So he does, so Glenn, I believe it was Glenn who was able to come back as this, like, monstrous creature, uh, and then, like, it, it started, like, growing claws and, like, getting all super bulky, or maybe it was the actual creature himself, I forget which one it is, but anyways, it had the ring, so I assume it was Glenn that was doing this, um, so it, he comes back a again, uh, and then he, like, starts, like, overwhelming Chris and Leon and as I said both of them get these very close very near death experience uh, moments 
uh, the helicopter, the big super helicopter comes in to help support them, but the creature, like, hits one of the people, uh, I believe it was the female, if, but it, he doesn't kill her, but he, like, hits her, and that, like, just makes the big chopper, like, spin around, or, like, uh, tilt, I guess. Uh, but the creature is stuck in a position because of Leon was, like, shooting at it from the other side of the roof, and then they were on that side shooting at it with this super gun. Like, I was like, that was so unnecessary. <laughs> I absolutely laughed at this. Like, the girl had this gun, and then she shoots it, and you see it, like, pierce through the creature all the way, and you think, oh, well, that was... That was an okay shot, I guess. But then you see it keep going into the city. And it starts plowing through buildings. Like, after building after building. Like, why would you do that? I was just like, what? So unnecessary. So over the top. So ridiculous. That moment, too. Uh, and I absolutely loved it, by the way. Uh, it was so stupid. But anyways, um... After that happens, uh, they essentially have Chris come up with, like, a grenade launcher, essentially. Like, it's a machine gun with a grenade attachment, I'll say. Uh, and then he manages to shoot it right in the weak spot, the, o the obvious, like, red, uh, part of it. Uh, you know, that, you know, Leanne, I guess, wasn't, uh, witty enough to get that moment, I guess. I don't know. But anyways, uh, Chris got the final hit on the creature, and, uh, the two of them managed to make it back with Rebecca with the cure. I believe it was her cure, too, so she kind of sa saved herself among those two saving her. And I kept saying throughout the movie, like, because she has, like, a timer thing, because it's, like, slowly infecting her. I was like, oh, they have plenty of time. And then I was like, the next time we see it, I was like, oh, they have plenty of time. And even, like, the third time I was like, oh, they have plenty of time. So it never really felt like she was in that much danger, even though we saw, like, it looked like it was further along than, than the timer was showing, if that makes any sense. But whatever. Um, small details aside... Uh, the two of them, or three of them, end up on the, the big chopper, and then they're flying off because they, uh, they killed a guy, and they fly off into the distance, wondering what they're gonna do next. Uh, and then we cut to the end of the movie where we see the, um, this, the Bane, not the Bane creature, but the Bane creature had this, like, female that was always constantly with her, and we see her get, like, shot down shot down, I put that in quotes, but we do see her later in the movie at the end of it, essentially being the last, uh, sort of bad guy that was left. She, she was, like, helping, uh, Glenn eff affect, uh, certain areas, like, she was the one who initially affected the place where, um, Rebecca was, she was the one who initially got her infected, so she survived at the end of the movie, so... Clearly, they intend to fo they intend to follow this up, and I really hope they do. I really enjoy these animated movies far more than the live action ones. I really enjoyed this movie for its over the top action. Uh, the exhibition uh, exposition was a little it was a little bulky, but it wasn't too bad, I guess. Uh, other than that, yeah, this movie is a okay for me. It was a nice action it was an action movie sure <laughs> and um it had its creepy moment moment like singular and um like the rest is just like them killing zombies so it's just like you know they tried their best to do their little jump scare moments and you know all that stuff aside uh i still thought it was fine it was still a fun to watch i i actually did enjoy it though uh, so I'd give it a 7 out of 10. I I thoroughly enjoyed it. So definitely check it out. Support the animated movies, please. So we can get more of this. So if you enjoyed this re review, then please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, everyone. 
Bye.